Early last May, Larry Brooks told his wife he was going for a walk in the Arts District. He left their loft at about 11 a.m., and soon after his wife, Anna Marie Piersimoni, heard sirens. Then the police knocked on her door. Brooks, a 68-year-old psychologist, had been struck and killed by a speeding McLaren sports car, a roughly $280,000 vehicle designed to go as fast as 200 miles an hour. The 23-year-old driver, a student, was arrested and charged with reckless driving and vehicular manslaughter. About a month ago, 32-year-old office assistant Monique Munoz was heading home to Hawthorne after work one evening. Her parents wondered why she was so late, but Munoz, who wanted to be an attorney, didn't answer her phone. Eventually, a police officer did. Munoz had been killed when a $200,000-plus Lamborghini SUV, traveling at a high rate of speed, according to the LAPD, slammed into her vehicle near Overland and Olympic. The driver, 17, was arrested on suspicion of vehicular manslaughter. Both the Brooks and Munoz families were shattered by the sudden, violent, unexpected and senseless loss of loved ones. Two lives were ended almost instantly by young drivers in cars costing more than many working people earn in years. For the survivors, there is no end to the grieving. To Piersimony, vehicular weaponry gone amok, destroyed her husband. Isaac Cardona, Munoz's stepfather, can't stop thinking about how the place where his hard-working stepdaughter died, isn't a raceway. It's a residential street, with a speed limit. In the year of the pandemic, posted speed limits seem to have stood for nothing at all. Lighter traffic has meant more speeding and reckless driving, even though there have been fewer collisions because of the dramatic decrease in traffic. The speeders are everywhere. I've seen them, and I bet you have, too. On city streets and on freeways, racing up from behind me in my rearview mirror, weaving between cars and blasting past me like I'm going in reverse. In the first month of the pandemic last spring, the California Highway Patrol reported that although traffic volume was down 35 percent, the number of citations for driving in excess of 100 miles an hour had increased by 87 percent over the same period a year earlier. Between September 1 and October 31, 4, 851 more CHP citations were issued for speeding at 100 miles an hour or more, a 93 percent increase over the same period a year earlier. That speeding has consequences, as the families of Munoz and Brooks know all too well. The CHP said that according to the most recent stats available, from three years ago, speeding was a factor in about one-third of the collisions involving death and serious injury. The Times reported last April that, with so few cars on the road, brazen street racing was popping up all over the state. But speeding isn't limited to organized events. It's in every neighborhood every day.